so I own Micro Four Thirds cameras for shooting video, but I don't use them as native MFT, I use them with speed boosters. The speed booster will allow me to emulate a bigger sensor or a wider and faster lens, depends on which way you want to look at it. But one problem that some people run into after buying a speed booster, especially the cheaper ones like the Viltrox, is not being able to reach infinity focus. But this problem has an easy fix though. By rotating the glass element in the speed booster, you will either screw the glass element closer or further away from the sensor, correcting this problem. This got me thinking. Rotating the glass element reminded me of adjusting back focus on zoom lenses meant for ENG and TV cameras. You'll adjust the back focus if the lens loses focus when zooming in or out. In other words, if the lens loses its parfocalness. That's not a word. Maybe we can achieve the same thing using the glass element in our speed boosters. So I decided to test it out. At my disposal I had a Micro Four Thirds camera, a Viltrox EFM2 speed booster and a Tokina 28-70mm zoom lens. Since I only have one speed booster and one zoom lens, I can't say if this will work for all lenses or all speed boosters, but it will serve more as a proof of concept. If you're going to attempt this on your own, be careful not to damage the glass element of the speed booster. I will not be held responsible if you damage your equipment. So when testing and trying to make your lens parfocal, you want to use it wide open, or at least close to it. And this is because you want the shallowest possible depth of field, so you can really see where the focus point is. If you'd attempt it at f11 for example, due to the much deeper depth of field, your lens might appear to be parfocal, but once you open up the aperture, everything could change. So let's look at the tests. I first tested how close the lens was to being parfocal without any adjustments. But keep in mind, I've already been adjusting the glass element of my speed booster, but not for this purpose. As you can see, I start by having the lens out of focus. I set focus on the chart, and then zoom in. In this case, the chart got out of focus as I zoomed in. When I refocus, I hunt back and forth a little just to make sure I've got the chart in the middle of the focus plane. One thing I did forget doing on this first test was to test in the opposite direction. When you're zoomed all the way in, you'll have a shallower depth of field since you are using a longer focal length. So if you set focus when you have the shallowest depth of field, you have an easier time determining where the actual focus point or focus plane is. Next up, I tried adjusting a bit anti-clockwise. As you can see, it got a bit worse, so now I know which way to turn. So next up, I tried turning the glass clockwise. And as you can see, it got a bit better again. So I kept going, turned it clockwise a little more, where I reached the limit of my speed booster. And as you can see, I found something that's parfocal, or at least very close to it. But I wanted to test it at different distances as well, to make sure it wasn't only tuned for that specific distance. So first up we have the minimum focusing distance. No problems here. And then at a further distance, at which it was harder to see the focus at the wide end since I had a, such a small focus chart. Which reminds me, when doing the test I made sure to magnify the image as much as possible when checking focus. So what do the tests tell you? My conclusion is, yes, it is possible to make a lens parfocal using a speed booster. With that being said, I can't speak for all lenses or all speed boosters. In fact, it might even differ between two speed boosters of the same model. But as a proof of concept, yes, it can be done. And if I recall correctly, Gerald Undone actually made his Sigma 18-35 parfocal using a Metabone speed booster as well. If you had success with any lens and speed booster combo, please let me know in the comments down below. But that wraps it up for this video. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see some more, and I'll see you next time.